Good afternoon to all my School of Medicine colleagues. Today my guests are two faculty from DCRI in the Department of Pediatrics. Kanisha Zimmerman is an Associate Professor and Danny Benjamin, the Kaiser Arena Distinguished Professor. And we'll talk about their incredibly important work to help our schools make informed decisions and plans. But before we get, begin, a few updates and reminders. We are seeing an uptick in cases in the state with over 2,000 cases of COVID reported yesterday and a definite increase in cases nationwide. Here at Duke, although the number of new cases reported in our Monday uh, dashboard continued to remain low, the surveillance program did detect a case which led to an identification of a cluster of nine positive students in an apartment complex in Durham. The students are in quarantine and doing well, and this is a good example of the value of the surveillance program. It's hard to say what is fueling these up uptick. It may be that people are moving in inside and congregating or just fatigue over the restrictions. However, as aptly pointed out by Scott Gottlieb this morning, the former FDA director, now is not the time to let down our guard. The next few months are going to be challenging, but there's a pipeline of solutions, including vaccines and therapeutics, that will be coming very soon. So please stay the course. I remind everybody to get their flu vaccine. The deadline is November 10th. And we're a bit behind where we were last year in terms of flu vaccination, so please make your plans accordingly. And early voting in North Carolina started yesterday and extends to October 31st. And anybody that's eligible to vote in Durham County can use our early voting site at the Karsh Alumni and Visitors Center. I voted yesterday morning. The process is very well organized with lots of attention to safety details, but there was a line even before the center opened. So again, please make your plans. Although we have declared that election day is a no meeting day, uh, I think it would be a good strategy to vote early. Across Duke Health, we're continuing to see work on the Moments to Movement uh, Dismantling Racism Initiative with a series of, Duke, of town halls planned across Duke Health. The health system will host a town hall on Monday, October 19th. The School of Medicine will host a town hall meeting in December and School of Nursing in November. And the new lecture series sponsored by the School of Medicine featuring presentations from our awesome Duke faculty on COVID research policy and patient care begins October 20th with the inaugural speech speakers being Greg Zembowski from the Duke Vaccine Institute and Mark McClellan from Duke's Margolis Center for Health Policy. So now let's talk to Kanisha and Danny. Both of you have spearheaded an important new program called ABC Science Collaborative, a partnership with schools and community leaders to facilitate safe opening of schools. So Danny, why don't you start with just how did you get into this work? Because it's not really part of at least what I thought was the DCRI mission. That's right, it's been a new adventure for us. The vice chair of the school board at Chapel Hill City Schools, Chapel Hill Carver City Schools is a pediatrician. And she and the board really wanted to get scientific input to inform their decisions. And we worked through quickly on the concept that there's going to be COVID in students and adults this fall and winter if schools are closed. And there's going to be COVID this fall and winter in students and adults if schools are open. The key question is, does having schools open by a secondary transmission, does having schools open increase COVID and increase the risk to the work environment for adults and the learning environment for children? We worked on the concept. Kanisha and I proposed it to NICHD. They provided some seed money to get the program off the ground. And uh, Kanisha and I really view this as a community service research embedded project for child and adult health. You know, it really is fill, filling a gap that's very much needed. So Kanisha, can you kind of outline what the components of the program are? Sure. So we're taking a three-tiered approach. Um, the first is educational outreach. So just making sure there's a source of information that can be trusted um, to which people can, on which people can rely. Um, that's educational outreach to superintendents and to teachers and now we've done to parents um, and a whole host of people. Um, the second part of this is really data to inform decision making. So using what we know and what people's experiences have been and collecting data individually from, um, from students as well uh, in order to feed it back to the districts to help them make decisions. 
And then third, as Danny mentioned, is the research opportunities really embedded within this this organization and this structure and research opportunities that look at whether or not schools and schools being open translates into more COVID. So Danny, I know everything you do is big. So <laughs> how big are you aspiring this program to be in terms of both local impact as well as national impact? Well, there are 50 million children in public schools in the United States and our goal is to have a positive impact on each and every one of those children and each and every one of the staff members and support people at each of the school, school districts for each of those children. Uh, locally, we have about half of the school districts in North Carolina, there are 115 school districts, just as a reminder, about half or uh, over half now are in the collaboratory. We're expanding uh, the program nationally of those children in North Carolina, approximately 500,000 are in the hybrid model. As a reminder to folks, that's go to school, half the, half the school goes Monday, Tuesday, the other half goes Thursday, Friday. We're already learning some things from those districts, even though the ones locally here have been closed this first quarter of instruction. And it's really a learning environment a quality improvement environment, a supportive environment for each of these districts for lessons learned and having the faculty and staff at Duke as a resource and as a trusted neutral third party in some of the decisions that those folks need to make that we provide a small amount of science to a very complex equation. So Kanisha, there are so many aspects of a student's life that might be counter to some of the interventions. So like masking, what are you seeing in terms of children being willing to take on masking as an intervention? Um, you know, it's been actually remarkable. Children will do this. They can do it. They will, they will definitely do it if people are modeling the appropriate behavior. Um, so it's been, it's been remarkable. There's in some places more than 99% compliance um, with masking in schools. Wow. And what about things like eating? I mean, all of us remember packed cafeterias. How, how is that handled? Uh, carefully, <laughs> as with all of this stuff. Um, you know, there have been people across the state that have done it very successfully by having things planned out. Eating in the classroom or eating outside, but having a set time for eating without having uh, your mask on, but making sure that you are spread apart from other people, and then using the rest of the time while your mask is on to socialize and do the, the social interaction that we know is so important in schools. And are you advising on sports? Seems to be the hot button item. <laughs> um, we are providing education uh, about the available data um, regarding sports and the risk of transmission in certain uh, circumstances. So a lot of your work is giving the information to schools and then they're making the decision, correct? That's correct, that's absolutely correct. So I love the fact that you have a research agenda, Danny, because I think learning and then improving is really the cycle that will move us forward. It's, so what, what are the priorities in the research agenda? Well, job one is really the risk of secondary transmission and informing the risk benefit ratio uh, decision around education. Uh, item number two is probably going to be things like the, edu is going to be educational impact on children as a result of school closure, social, emotional uh, determinants of health. So we've got a couple of general pediatricians on the team who have been really important in those efforts. They're well linked. Gabby and Sarah and some of the other team are well linked to the community. The, the school performance overarching, uh, COVID testing. So KZ has an application in uh, to leverage the infrastructure we've been developing on how should schools do testing? Uh, do we go into what's known as the adapted curriculum? Some school districts, the special needs curriculum, how do we really support those teachers and those uh, students? So it's just one item after another. And then obviously downstream, we'll be looking at the vaccine agenda and other community-based uh, research opportunities that will be able to partnership with these school districts and those partnerships and trusts will be in place. So is it too early to ask you uh, what you're seeing? Actually, 
It's really been great. So of the school districts that are open in North Carolina, the number of clusters, and just as a reminder for your viewers, that's five or more cases that are linked epidemiologically but to the school by the local Department of Health has been remarkably low. There are very few in traditional public schools. It's about a dozen across the entire state, over nine weeks of instruction, over half a million children. And most of those have been followed up by the superintendents getting on the phone with us for the four or five that have been in the collaborative, getting on the phone with us and doing the lessons learned. So the number of clusters is tremendously low. And even the secondary transmission across the counties, uh, Gaston, for example, has made their data publicly available. And it's remarkable that children and adults look to be safer in schools than they are outside of school. The transmission is that low within schools. Wow, well, that is indeed great news. So this program is an excellent example of how our Duke faculty, staff, and students are partnering with the community to really make a difference and fill in the gaps. In the last few weeks with Jill Boy, I've tried to catalog often the voluntary work so many of you are doing, providing critical input on policy, processes, interpreting the latest scientific data. And I have dozens of examples. This is being done at the local community level, state, national, international level. So it reflects not only the high regard for the knowledge and expertise of all of you, but your passion and commitment to service. Amazing work. And thank you, Kanisha and Danny, for being here today and all the work that you're doing. And to all have a safe and restful weekend. Take care.